In bench tests, the Moto Flux motor has proven to generate rotational torque. In this early proof of concept design, torque was amplified many times over input. We put torque into the motor to turn the radial field director. The armature follows the radial field director to the next pole, and we actually get a torque gain given to us from permanent magnetic field. There's power going in, and it's being measured, it's on the screen, and there's rotational torque coming out of the motor, which is greater than the input. That increase in power is coming from the force stored in permanent magnets. So this is actually a proof of concept that can't be disputed. The Motoflux testing procedure. We have four models in here, four evolutions. Of the, I have another one at home I built in my garage. All, good, all great ideas come from somebody's garage, I'll tell you that right now. But uh, it did take a couple years to get it working this good. This is actually the Motoflux motor right here. So this is how we make power with permanent magnets. This is our proof of concept test bench in our lab. So I can go through it. I'm gonna show you what each part of this is. So this is a control motor that is used to control the direction of the radial director. So it takes a very small amount of power to turn the radial director. The radial director needs to be activated mechanically or by an electric motor outside. This would actually, in an electric vehicle, this would be hooked to your accelerator. And it's coupled to a torque sensor here, which tells us how much torque we are putting into the motor. And this is actually the field director, which is being driven by that motor. These two shafts are in line and on a single axis, but the input shaft and the output shaft are not mechanically connected together. They're only connected together with magnetism. The power gain that we get on the other side is coming from the permanent magnets themselves. And over here is the output shaft. So once again, here's a good shot of the armature from this side. And this is its drive shaft, goes through these bearings. And here's another torque sensor over here, which tells us how much torque we're putting out. This is a disc brake. So this simulates the load of the car or the generator, however you're gonna use it. And we adjust the hydraulic pressure on the caliper here to increase or decrease the drag on the motor. These, these are our actual readout sensors and we get our numbers right here. So this is the output power and this is the input power from the other side. So we can stand right here and watch what the motor is taking to turn and what it's given us as a yield. Okay, so let's take a good look at what's going on here. We actually uh, have the whole thing running for you today. So this is a proof of concept. And as you can see on the screen here, we're inputting about a quarter of a foot pound of torque. And on the output of the motor, we're actually getting about five foot pounds. You can look on our computer screen and see that we get positive and negative inputs. That is because of the scale of our measurements. And sometimes the armature actually pulls the field director ahead. Motoflux is continually being tested under a variety of conditions. We use a couple of variations here in this test. One is RPM. And RPM, once again, is controlled by the radial field director. We also adjust the drag on this disc brake, which causes the machine to have to work harder. So we control two different things. We control RPM and we control drag or load. 
We don't know where the sweet spot is. Of course, it's gonna be each individual design of a Motoflux motor is gonna have characteristics. We just can prove that we are getting work out of the force of permanent magnets, and that is the whole purpose of this proof of concept. Motoflux has generated additional power under all circumstances, and the Motoflux principle is ready to be further developed for a range of applications. So imagine the contribution Motoflux can make to the dilemmas that we have now with rolling blackouts in California. I mean, they actually mandated the sale of electric vehicles in California, and then they ask you not to charge them on weekends. Okay, so just think of the potential of removing most of the battery mass of all those electric cars and minimizing the carbon footprint. And instead of calling them EVs, electric vehicles, call them ZEVs, zero emission vehicles. But the potential is completely unknown into the future. I think is the start of the biggest revolution in motors that there ever was. Coming up next, how it works.